What is going on guys welcome back and today sort of we're going to learn how to properly use PyLint which is a static code analysis tool for Python and it's going to allow us to write more professional and more beautiful code. So let us get right into it. Alright, so PyLint is essentially a tool that allows us to analyze and evaluate the quality of our code. We could also see the beauty of our code based on the official Python styling guidelines based on the PEP 8. Because when we write Python code, we should follow certain guidelines, certain conventions, for example, basic naming conventions, class names should be written in Pascal case, function names, variable names should be written in snake case, but also some more general stuff like at the end of each file, you should have a blank line. Uh, those are conventions written in the official Python styling guidelines. I have one or two videos on this channel where I explain the guidelines and how to write professional Python code. And PyLint is essentially a tool that automatically tells us how much um, a file, how much our code conforms to those guidelines. It rates it basically 10 being the maximum rating that we can get, but it also gets into negative numbers. So it tells us basically how much uh, we stick to those guidelines and we should stick to those guidelines unless we have a reason not to. For example, if we're in an ecosystem uh, where we already have other conventions, but we're going to talk about this here uh, in this video as well. So in order to use PyLint, we need to open up the command line and we need to first install it. I'm going to do that by saying pip install PyLint. And once we have PyLint installed, uh, we don't have to import it. We can just write our Python code because we're going to use this tool in the command line. So I have prepared some sample code here. I deliberately made some mistakes in terms of uh, styling and in terms of conventions. So I'm going to just write it here the way I have prepared it with a couple of intentional mistakes. So you can see we create a class my person. We have an init function here, init method with the parameters name, age, and gender. And what we do is we say self dot name equals name self dot h equals h. Uh, and then we get to this function here, get name self dot asked for name is going to be set to true when we ask for the name. And then we're going to return self dot name. And then down here, we're going to just print my person, we're going to create a person Mike, who's 20 years old, male, uh, and we're going to get the name of Mike and print it. So in terms of functionality, this works, we have a class, we have instance, uh, an instance of the class, Mike, 20 years old, uh, with a male gender, we can get the name, we can print it, everything works fine. So the code uh, works in terms of functionality. However, there are a couple of things here that are definitely not professional. First of all, the class name is not in Pascal case, it's just uh, in lowercase characters. We have here a parameter that is not used in the constructor. So we have to provide it, but we don't actually use it anywhere. Uh, we also have here a variable. First of all, the variable name is not in snake case, but uh, not just that, but it's also uh, initialized here in a function that is not or in a method that is not the constructor. We also have the, the method name here get name, which is also not in snake case, but in um, Pascal case, essentially. And we also don't have a blank line in the end. So if I now go ahead, open up my command line, navigate to this coding directory here. I have a shortcut for that. I'm going to navigate to current. And here I'm going to now say, I think the command was pilot, just pilot, and then main.py. If I say that, you can see the code has been rated at zero out of 10. And we can see why that is the case. Let me maybe zoom out a little bit. Um, it tells us exactly what the problems are. We can see here, first of all, final new line missing. Um, also, we don't have a doc string in the module, we don't have a doc string for the class, uh, the class name my person does not conform to uh, to Pascal case. And the snake case convention is also violated and stuff like that. And we also have here an attribute to find outside of init. And we also should have, um, yeah, here, too few public methods, we have a class with only one public method. So it doesn't really make sense to have this as a class here, we should add another method. And because of that, we get a scoring of zero. Now, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure when we get a negative rating, I think I had a neg negative rating. Um, at some point, maybe if we mess up even more here, I'm not sure about this. Um, but this is definitely not professional, we can see we get zero out of 10. And the best thing that you want to have is 10 out of 10. Now, some of these errors, some of these mistakes, some of these violations are already also 
uh, hinted in PyCharm. So if I hover above this here, you can see class name should use camel case convention, camel case, Pasco case, essentially the same thing. We can ignore errors like this, or we can also just change this. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to step by step make this better and better and see how PyLint reacts to our changes. So let's just go ahead and implement the correct naming conventions. Let's call this class my person in the proper case. Let's call this <clears throat> um, let's call this attribute here asked underscore for underscore name. And let's also maybe not initialize it in get name, but initialize it up here. Let's say self dot um, asked for name is false by default. And then also let's use the gender, let's say self dot gender equals gender. And let's also change here the name to get name like this. And of course, we need to do the same thing down here since we're using the functions from above my person. So now at least we have the basic naming conventions, uh, we have uh, everything initialized in the init method, we have the proper conventions for the variables, we have all the parameters being used. Um, what we should also do is we should add a new line here. And just by doing this, we should get a much higher score. So let's just rerun the command. And you can see now that we get six out of 10. Uh, you can also always see the difference here plus six point uh, points because the last run was zero out of 10. Now if I change something here again, let's say for example, I don't use the gender, I remove it here again, I rerun the code, what you will see is, first of all, uh, that I get a 4.44 out of 10, the previous run was six out of 10. So now I get negative 1.56 uh, rating. So worse than last time. So whatever I changed, I should basically revert it uh, to get the proper ranking again. So let's go ahead. Um, and we get six points again. Well, if we look here at the, the problems that we still have, uh, we can easily see why we don't get 10 points, because we're missing a lot of documentation strings. And we also have too few public methods still. So what we can do here is we can just add another method, for example, something like get h maybe and we can return self dot h. And that alone should already be enough to remove this last point and give us some additional rating points, we can see now 6.67. Um, but of course, the problem is now I added a new function that also doesn't have a function string. So I now have a different problem here. Um, well, for the documentation, I do have a video on my channel where I explain how to write proper doc strings, you can watch this if you want to. Now I'm just going to add some doc string so that we have something. I'm going to add a simple module doc string, I'm going to say here, my perfect code example. This should eventually get 10 out of 10 points. Something like that. Then for the class, we're going to say that this is just a simple person class. And then for the individual methods, we're going to provide a doc string inside of them, we're going to say here, the return value of get name is going to be uh, the name returns the name of the person something like that, then let's copy this and paste it down here for the h as well. So like this. Um, and that should actually, if I'm not mistaken, cover everything. And we now have 10 out of 10 points. Now, this is a very simple example. Usually you have files with much more code and much more classes and much more interconnections and statements and stuff like that. But this is the basic way this tool works, you run it, you get a score, you run it, you change something, you run it again, you get a better score, or uh, a worse score, and you have to adjust based on that. Now, what if certain things, uh, you don't want to change them, but you want to actually keep them. Um, so you want to basically say, okay, it's fine for me to not use all, uh, not use all the parameters here, or it's fine to use a different case in this particular example, because it fits with a certain, um, with a certain definition with a certain guideline that I have inside of my company. So for example, maybe uh, every time I'm just making up something right now, every time we have an attribute that contains ask in its name, we have to write it in Pasco case. That's what my boss told me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here ask for name, and I'm going to use the same name here. Now, this is going to give me negative points. So if I run this here, you can see I lose some points because this is not in the snake case naming style. 
Now, what I can do is I can say, okay, it's fine, but I have to do it that way because my boss tells me to do it that way. I don't want this to influence my score. So what I can do is I can add a comment here. I can say pilot and I can say disable equals. And here you now put the, the, the name or the identifier of the uh, convention, the error that you want to disable. And the one you want to disable is always here in parentheses. So invalid dash name. We can just say here invalid dash name. I'm not sure if we have to do it uh, here as well or only once. Let's see. Um, there you go. Yeah, 10 points. Because now we basically say, okay, we ignore this convention in this particular case. Now, I don't think that this affects h. So if I say self dot h equals h and I use h here as well, I think this should still uh, yeah, it still removes some points because for this particular line, I don't have the exception. This pilot disabling uh, statement only affects this particular line and this particular attribute. It doesn't uh, mean that I can just call everything how I want now. It just means that this particular line here will not affect my score, at least not because of the invalid name error. All right, so what I want to do here in order to show you how we can actually do that is I want to copy the code that we had in the beginning this one here with all the mistakes, uh, we can run pilot again. So let me just save this here. Let me run pilot again. And let's just go ahead and get 10 points without changing anything. How do we do that? We basically just copy all of these here. And we, um, we put them into the code as, uh, as an exception. So we say here, for example, pilot disable, in this case, invalid name, we can also say, um, I think we should be able to provide multiple disable statements here. So disable equals missing class doc string. I'm going to also add up here a pilot disable missing module doc string, stuff like that. Uh, what else do we have? We have a class doc string. I think we talked about this already. Uh, missing final new line. Let's go ahead and say here pilot disable missing final new line. What else do we have uh, here? We want to say pilot disable um, disable attribute defined outside init. We also want to say here pilot disable missing function doc string. Um, and then we also want to say pilot disable unused argument. So again, all these names that I'm writing down here, they are written here in the parentheses. Now let's see if I run this, how many of those are still left. You can see we already get 6.25 points just by adding these comments. Uh, what do we have here? Disable. Okay, I mistyped something. Doc sting. It should be doc string. So we should get even more points now. Uh, we have one more problem. Too few public methods. So let's just go ahead and say here, disable equals too few public methods. And that should be enough to get 10 points. So we can do that as well. So if you have certain things, you want to stick to the guidelines. But for example, because of the way your company is structured, your code base is structured or something like that, you have to stick to different coding conventions, uh, different naming conventions, or you don't want to have blank lines, or you don't want to have to use every parameter because you just want to keep them there for later use. Uh, you can also just disable that to be able to still evaluate the code quality or code beauty. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.